I'll take split screen over game lagging. I'll take co-op over tea bagging. I got, I got your back when we're on the attack. The body stack and the points will rack up. Now aren't you glad you called in for backup? Cause when you're stuck and you don't know what to do, I am the one you call, cause I am player two. Oh, hello there. I'm Miles Newver. You may know me from such Lord Jackal videos as Shovel Knight and Cat Ear Demon. I'll, I'll put I'll put like links pictures of those and links to them. I can do that, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. I went up to my roommate and close personal friend Lord Jackal and said, "Wouldn't it be cool if like we did a video on the channel? We did a series on the channel about just like co-op games?" And he was like, "Yeah, that's great. You should start writing it." And then a few months later. Finally, I go up to him and I say, huh, remember that idea I had about making that, that show or something? Good times. At that point, he stopped listening to me because clearly nothing I say is ever going to happen ever. But it did, because this is that show, so... Uh. Welcome to Ready Player Two. I need a couch for couch... Co All right, couching, couching, go. Whoa, teleport. Awesome. Oh, I need a friend to play with. Awesome! So for my first episode, I'm going to be doing a game that that uh, is, is pretty important to me. I uh, I was gonna tease it out, but it's Bor it's Borderlands 2. I'm doing Borderlands 2. I'm doing a Borderlands 2 video. So I'm gonna start out talking about what Borderlands 2 did better than Borderlands. Uh, I first heard about Borderlands. Um, at school and I saw came across some people playing it and I passed with them for hours and they finally told me it's basically uh, action-packed shoot 'em up that's super stylized with the leveling of RPG element and it has couch co-op so pretty much anything I've ever looked for in a game ever the one thing I thought Borderlands could have improved on was more story and not only did they deliver that with Borderlands 2 they also improved on some gameplay features Mainly by which I mean they made the revolvers even more badass, which I hadn't known was possible, but it totally was possible, and they totally did it. Yeah. One thing Borderlands 2 really nailed that had they started doing Borderlands 1 was the sense of humor. It was fantastic. It's great for late night game thons fueled by Mountain Dew, so you're up at 3 in the morning laughing at poop jokes. It's perfect for that. There's so many times I remember playing games late at night and hoping it would get to that point, whereas Borderlands and Borderlands 2 actively fuel that sense of humor and that sort of camaraderie. Another thing 2 did very well was it brought back a lot of the characters from 1 in a way that added great depth to them. I remember playing through Borderlands 1 and being really curious about a lot of things, and they really like filled it out in a really cool and interesting way. And there were more than a few times where they legitimately surprised me with the way they were going. And that's not always very common in video games these days. <laughs> Another thing they did better in Borderlands 2 was giving you opportunities to find more about the characters you were playing. While they did flesh out the characters from Borderlands 1 that returned, they also hid audio logs throughout the world that were from the point of view of the character you're playing as or people that they knew before they ended up on Pandora. And the audio logs in Borderlands, both of them, are some of my favorite parts. They do really interesting, eerie things, and they just like use the whole audio log collecting thing very well in a humorous, sometimes very creepy way. In terms of basic co-op gameplay from Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2, there wasn't a big change. They pretty much nailed it the first time around. I I'm talking only from the experience of couch co-op. I've never played the games online. But when you're sitting next to your friends, it's a flawless experience. Little things that they do, like uh, shared money that you pick up, shared experience with the person who made the kill getting slightly more, and optional dueling with little to no circum... Uh, little to no consequence are things that make this a really great co-op experience. Things that lead you to legitimately share the experience as opposed to racing for every single bit of money you can or, or leaving your partner in the dust to go make 10 more kills than them. 
The second portion I want to talk about is things Gearbox did better than Bungie. Mainly the Halo series and the Destiny series, which did come after. Which says something very interesting, because they had Borderlands to look at when they made their game, and seemed to blatantly ignore all the things that Gearbox just got right. The first and probably my biggest pet peeve that Borderlands did so well that Bungie failed at was the co-op story. I've played through Halo 3's co-op story multiple times, and it never felt like a team experience. It was very much me haloing at some guys the way you do in Halo, while my friend happened to be haloing some guys in the same game, and I might see him if I'm haloing in the right direction at the right time, but he's probably just a blur with a marker above it. And that's not fun. It's, it's, oh, we run around for 30 minutes and then maybe my friend pauses it four times to say, did you see that? And I'm like, no, of course I didn't see that. But he needed to pause the game and tell me about it anyway. You know who you are. But Borderlands makes it a very team experience with their class system and their very, very unique classes, which is something they did better than Destiny. In Borderlands, each of the classes has a very specific job it can do, or several very specific jobs you can choose from. Like, I can take my Siren, which I always played the Siren because I'm a dumb boy, and either turn her into a crazy one Siren army, or make her the team's medic, to the point where her main ability changes distinctly from an attack to a long-range insta-res. Whereas games like Destiny have three classes that level up pretty much exactly the same no matter what. So yay, I'm level 2, I get to jump higher, and I'm level 3 and I get grenades, those might be switched. The point being, if I'm playing Destiny and I'm a hunter, at no point in that game I'm thinking, God, I just wish I had a warlock with me because I need a warlock right now. That never happened. Not once. That's one of the things that makes Borderlands such a great team experience, that every person has a specific job. I know going into it that I, I hide back and use my sniper rifle and then heal guys, while my friend runs in with the shotgun and throws out his turret at some point. For a game that's all about running and gunning, it has way more strategy to it than any Halo game I've ever had to play. And part of that is because of this class system, part of it's because you're not always stronger than your enemies. Like, you can end up in an area where the enemies are just stronger than you, and you can either run back and level up, or you can try and push on and use your abilities better and your items better. And that's cool, and that's exciting. It makes it fun. It gives you a world to explore with consequences, as opposed to a hallway to run down where you're going to be the strongest thing you fight every step of the way. In summary, the things that make Borderlands feel like a specific team of people pushing through a struggle together make it a fantastic game and specifically couch co-op experience. Unlike other games that feel like, oh, me and my friend happen to be playing this game in the same room as each other. Is Borderlands 2 a great game if you are a competitive player? Probably not. It has a small arena and, and it's dueling in which you can wager items, and that's very interesting. And that might be enough for you if you're competitive, but I wouldn't know. That's not how I play games. But then again, that's why I'm player two. That was cheesy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. So you, uh, you, you, you want me to edit this? Or like... No, no. I could probably edit it myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching the first episode of Ready Player 2. Remember to like this video if you liked this video. Subscribe to Lord Jackal's channel. Though the five people who are going to watch this video probably already have subscribed to Lord Jackal's channel. And make sure you check out Hammerspace. Something else I should say, something else I should say Chris? Anything? If you want to, like... Tell them about the other videos you were in. If you, if you want to make them sit through that, uh, check out Shovel Knight and Cat Ear Demon. It's it's not called that. It's, it's, it's Xenoblade. It was, it was Pandora's Tower. Pandora's Cat Ear Demon. Cut.
Uh, hi, I'm Miles Newirth, and I will be telling you guys all about how awesome I am. Cause, <laughs> yeah, why it's yeah, I'm really awesome. I'm gonna drink more. Welcome to Ready Player Two, my game about couch co-op. Bed co. I need a couch. Okay, uh, couch. You also you also said my game about couch co-op. <laughs> okay. So in summary. My favorite part of Borderlands is how they... What are they doing up there Look, every night? It's crazy sex. I wish I had crazy hopping around on chairs sex, because that's what they're doing, I can tell. It feels like bonkers involved. I, you know? Sure. I'm down. I'm in. I'll join you. So in summary, I forgot what I was going to say because of the chair sex. 